So what does AMD and RTG do to stay afloat in a post-Pascal world? Well, let's dig into some of the directions they could possibly take. Now, I'd be out of my mind to say that the Vega 64 launch did any huge favors for Radeon. It was hot, it was power hungry, it could barely keep up with the GTX 1080, and it was plagued by a launch in the middle of the worst GPU shortage ever thanks to absurd amount of demand by miners. Now Vega 56, on the other hand, did do a much better job standing up to the GTX 1070, but still suffered by only 30 minutes of availability before it come, become vaporware for quite some time. So NVIDIA launching their GeForce GTX RTX 20 series cards starting in less than two days what does Radeon do to stay competitive? Truthfully, if they stay on this current pricing structure, it just won't make any sense to go with Vega over say an RTX 2080 or an RTX 2070 as they'll be leagues faster for similar pricing. Radeon could say drop the price of Vega 56 and the Vega 50, uh, 64 rather by around $100 or so and leverage the idea of FreeSync as a total package cost saving measure to the consumer. This is something I kind of hoped for in a conversation on Twitter with uh, a friend, Anthony, over at TweetDown. But I think he had an even better idea of what may happen. He proposed that Vega wouldn't drop in price, but rather disappear altogether. What I would imagine is they would be moving resources that would have been used for an RX Vega over to the Instinct or Radeon Pro lines where they can make up some serious grounds in the profits department. At this point, Radeon could initiate a pricing reduction of the RX 500 series, moving the RX 588GB down to a $199 price point, making it a great option for the 1080p FreeSync crowd out there. Even in our recent testing, the RX 570 is holding up really well, and one of those priced for around $150 to $170, paired with a few games, mind you, and the proposal of a FreeSync panel for around the same price paired together for around $300, giving it a great gaming experience for very little money. The total cost of ownership is going to be a strong point of the sale and something they're going to have to leverage, so I would expect to see that push coming very soon. Although I do disagree with the idea of the dies going to Intel, I would imagine that they'll be more likely to head over to Apple as well as to other custom solutions instead. But 2019 isn't going to be an easy road for AMD and moving into 2020, things are only gonna get more fierce as a return to the dedicated graphics card race, Intel enters the market. Still not sure which angle Intel's going to be approaching. Are they going for the workstation or the professional users? Or are they even targeting gamers? Either way, high core count chips may finally have access to use QuickSync. But a very similar question has been asked regarding AMD CPU business only a few years ago, and they seem to have turned things around in quite the amazing way. At this point, we'd love to hear your predictions and thoughts on this one down in the comment section below. Now, this has been Keith with WCCF Tech TV. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the next video, and we'll catch you then.